Um, thank you so much. One of the best attitudes down here in the hot pits, guys. Absolutely. And, you know, what's really cool about that is Rome, he knows the car is proven. Connor goes in there, proves that it is capable machine at the uh, at the hands of, obviously, a, dr a Drift Masters champion. Um, a fairly equal match here. These guys are out for it. it uh, Dude, it could be anybody that could win here in Long Beach. I mean, the, the Widowmaker, this this track, we should, Brian Eggert was saying, this should be called the Gauntlet. I mean, judge, jury, and executioner, baby. Long Beach does not feel apologetic at all. Here we go, our first battle of 2024 season. Odie Bashi's in Jeff Jones. Let's send it. Here we go, Odie Bashi's field suspension, S15. Goes and initiates, here comes Jeff Jones into view. Jeff can be a little closer. Massive angle there from Odie Bashi's. He backs it in, taps that back bumper. Jeff that's got really good proximity. You see that shimming there, though? That's going to reflect negatively on him as he goes into that last outside, inside clipping point. A little touch and go. And that big drift energy brings it on home. So Odie Bakshis leads. Really good angle going to outside zone one, coming into view with the naked eye. And then under the bridge, you saw Jeff Jones a little bit of wavering there. Yeah, so Odie comes in real hot. His, his ability to launch off the line it seems to be getting better and better with every run. And then he catches that wall pretty well. Does pull a little bit of angle out of the car, gets Jeff to hesitate a bit when that happens. Then you see Jeff start reeling him in as Odie gets really deep into outside zone three. Into the touch and go, you see the smoke stop. Jeff doing a good job pulling a little bit of angle out to be able to get through there, but uh, it was a great job from both drivers. Odie just maybe a touch too deep in outside zone one. You can see right there, it does cause him to lose a bit of angle, which means that into outside zone two, he's a little bit late. Now he's able to correct it. Very expert move there into three. Touch and go, inner clip, looks good. Jeff had a good chase. I mean, he did have to react to that uh, hard hit, but outside of that, I mean, I, I really didn't see any massive, massive issues with Jeff's chase. No, it, just like I said, just that kind of, not not mimicking that angle exactly, and just a little bit of hiccups here and there. Yeah. But uh, Jeff, I think he's gonna he's got the fresh air, that evil automotive, uh, those that shop out in Redlands. Jeff made a move. Him and his wife moved uh, closer out there, and uh, excited to see what Jeff has got for us this season. But Odie Bach, he's, he he went hard on the wall. Was it him that went the hard yesterday with, uh, behind Rudy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a good hit. He backed it in, but still, I mean, <laughs> like I said, these walls, no, they don't they don't feel bad at all. All right. Once those lights extinguish, you can see on either side the Type S lights. And once they extinguish, ready to go. That starts chicane, matching them up, so it's not a drag race to initiation. Across the nose of Odie Bakshi, he goes, Jeff Jones! Slides it on in that first outside zone. Jeff, I told you, a lot more comfortable. A snappy transition. Odie Bakshi's pally was right there, right as he transitioned. That was some magician wizardry right there. He needs a trip wizard hat. Now, that last inside clip. Got to tell you, Odie Bakshi, he just, he's just Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You know, out of the car, oh, golly gee, and then just like, just the claws you can see come out. That transition, you saw how yeah. he was immediately there. Yeah, so taking a look at our replay now. So Jeff with a bit of a swing as he get into initiation. Good line there, a small hesitation, does a phenomenal job through outside zone one, but then does not get nearly deep enough in outside zone two. Three gets things wrangled back in. Odie keeping, you know, six foot, seven foot gap in between them and then starts to reel it in right there. Um, Odie able to get the car back into angle. So a couple things that I'm looking at with it is De Jeff did have a better outside zone one. I think that's pretty clear. But outside zone two was essentially missed, you know, by the standards that we've got now. Um, so then it's going to come down to outside zone three and then into our touch and go. Odie's chase, pretty similar. So I think the judges are going to have to go down to, you know, what mistake was worse? Was it Odie going a little bit too aggressive in one and being, you know, missing part of two? Or is it Jeff missing almost all of two? Um, so yep. it'll, be, it'll be tough. That's where the needles bounce around. Here we go, slide him left for Odie Box. He's a right for Jeff Jones and Odie Box, she gets the win. That's why I say just in 32, just like that, it can, uh, it can end very quickly. But again, great effort by Jeff Jones. Such a great attitude. Yesterday, seating brackets, more bragging rights, more to get in the show, but more seat time. So it might benefit him. Like I said, the quote is 10,000 laps on this track in a simulator. But guess what? The dozer. Uh, when push comes to shove, the dozer can push around. That royal purple BMW. Here we go. All right, there goes Dylan Dozer. He's out that first outside zone. Manoa tucks in. Now in that second. Oh, Manoa. A little bit of a mistake there. You saw a little correction there as Dylan Dozer Hughes on the GT radial tires, transitions back onto the inside clip. Manoa backs off. He dives into the inside. So maybe got disrupted there. But Dylan the Dozer Hughes 
puts it down. So again, that 2J powered BMW of Dylan Hughes. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so Dylan, um, straight line initiation, big e-brake pull to get the car out. Gets on throttle quite well. Outside zone one looks good. Touches the bumper there, just misses his bumper on outside zone two. And then we did see some hesitation, a small correction from Manoa in the chase in a couple of occasions. This is another spot where he dove in a little bit too early and caught the front end of the car. So if we watch here for the chase, Manoa doing a really good job, transitions perfectly in time, but then realizes he doesn't have the same bite and has to get back on the throttle, scrubbing some angle out, and then sort of fights to get settled again through outside zone three. And as we come through here, you can see that dive. Now, he gets on the brakes really quick, so he doesn't plow into the side of the dozer, but uh, yeah, a couple of, couple of mistakes. Nothing crazy, but it, it, you know, it could play into what the, the judge's decision is after we see this next battle. All right, so let's see how it transpires. I've seen some of the drivers watching. I've seen a no back down there. Shanahan, Simon also there watching their other competitors, seeing what's going on, seeing the lay of the land. You know, sometimes drivers will never have been here before, and then they go in and throw and throw it down here at this uh, unforgiving track. Hey, shout out to Sean and Jet Neff in the building. I see you guys are here. Thank you for joining us. The Neffs. So Eric Kendrick uh, recently on the Chargers. Now he's over on the Dallas Cowboys. He was the Accelerate nice. and Woody and their program. So got a got a bunch of VIPs in the building. So to, uh, we could get a variety of people out here. So here we go. Manoa will now lead. Arroyo Manoa. Dylan Hughes will chase him down. Like you said, you saw those minimal corrections from Manoa. Got into the side of the dozer, but now I feel like he's going to push back. Here comes Manoa. Juke racing 86. <laughs> Now initiating in that first outside zone. Here goes Manoa. Good angle. He does use all the course. I think Dozer, watch, watch, watch Dylan. He's going to surge right here. There he goes, that third outside zone. That that right there is, that, you know, that's experience. That's that's Dylan knowing what he needs to do here in Long Beach. You know, maybe dial it back a little bit and then attack going under the bridge in outside zone three. Giving yourself a little bit of a buffer, a safety net, because here's Manoa, who's new to FD, obviously not not new to drifting, 14 years old. What were I, what was I doing when I was 14? I don't know. I wasn't doing this, that's for no. sure. No. <laughs> yeah, so super stoked. Let's take a look at it again. I love how Dylan basically mimics the exact same initiation that Manoa's got. Goes actually a little bit deeper than Manoa, causing him to fall back a little bit. Now Manoa in the lead, touches the bumper on both of our first two outside zones. Dylan grabs onto it a little bit more, goes even deeper than Manoa does in the chase, which is wild. Does cause him to catch up a little bit. I mean, this is a tough one. This is definitely a tough. Both runs were incredible. Both uh, both runs were, you know, over an 85, if you will. We're going back to the old qualifying standard. So this is something that could qualify for a one more time if the judges can't decide. So you do see there that Dylan did have a, a, a decent correction because he dove in and had the back end touch the wall harder than Manoa did. But I mean, really, Hero was was touching the wall anywhere that he could. Look at this. There's Manoa's team, Jerry Yang, and the. The guys, there's uh, there's our judges. See Reese Man. Reese, hold your hand up. Oh, there we go. Look at this. Look at this group. group All huddled here. up. I love yeah, the camaraderie, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, guys, grab a knee. Here's your orange slices. And like I said yesterday, hold my juice box. Hold He's 14 juice. years old. Yeah, you had to go to school in between events, between FDJ and then over here, you had to do one day of school. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, the stats are saying that uh, Manoa, 53%, Hughes, 21%. Let's take a look at our Air Force replay, side by side. Yeah, so, I mean, if, if we can't really decide, the judges are really going to start to dive into what the lead run looks like. And I do think Manoa's got a bit of an advantage there, uh, but they both had some mistakes in the chase. Uh, it's, you know, Manoa was not as aggressive, and that's what caused the problem. And Dylan was overly aggressive, and that's what caused the problem. So. We have to find the balance in between the two, but not easy, that is for sure. I, yeah, don't, I really don't know which way to go on this one. Right, I, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think I could choose. You think I so? I think I could choose, yeah. Yeah, here we go, slide him left for Dylan Hughes, slide him right for Manoa. Look at this, we got Manoa one more time, and Manoa gets the win, taking out Dylan Hughes in top 30. All right, here we go, moving on to our next battle. And that is uh, Kazuya Taguchi, right? Kazuya Taguchi and Alec Robbins. Kazuya Taguchi up garage, another 86, another Jerry Yang racing vehicle. Alec Robbins, oh, gets way loose. Had some trouble there chasing down Kazuya Taguchi. Taguchi almost going in the wall. 
saw him back off there quite a bit going into outside zone three, but Alec Robbing spinning early on. That'll mean Kazuya Taguchi has a major advantage here. Don't know what happened to Robbins, but just you saw him just really kind of fighting the car, and then eventually it came around. So that will be that'll be a, a zero. But hey, well, some amazing vehicles and programs over the years. So here we go. Alec Robbins now will lead. He's going to need to throw down a heater of a lead run with Kazuya Taguchi in his rearview mirror. And you know, Kazuya over the last few years, like I said, Jerry Yang, he got that win in St. Louis, and that was just such a tipping point for him and his program and his mentality. Here we go. Alec Robbins out front. In that Nissan C, there he goes, a lot more comfortable. Gets out there, fades that back bumper. A little hesitation going to outside zone two on the Kenda tires and outside zone three. The boy from Minnesota, oh, and Kazuya dives in on the inside. That's oh. a major mistake. That was a massive mistake by Kazuya. It just glitched. He just absolutely glitched like he was in a video game. Almost goes into the wall. Wow, and yeah, so basically default back down to the lead runs. Let's look at it again. What went wrong? Yeah, so uh, Alec Robbins a little slow out of the gate to, to begin with, but then gets on the power, goes really deep in outside zone one, does a good job through outside zone two, and then in through three here. Let's see if we can notice anything from Kazuya. It looks like he just gets on throttle and backs the car in. I mean, when it comes to, to backies, he was definitely getting there, but for what we're looking for right now, that is not the way to go. Alec Robbins, yeah, taking that Holly EFI powered Kenda Tire Z and, and doing a great job. I mean, you know, he knew. He's a, he's a driver that drives so well under pressure, but I really don't know what happened there to Kazuya. It's like the car just stepped out and, you know, uh, yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah, and it, I don't know if you saw Robbins. His line wasn't exactly the prettiest either. He kind of swung wide around it, you know, went out of that inner clip. Could have been tighter there, but it seemed like it was an independent incident, obviously, just given the separation of the two vehicles. So, unfortunate for Kazuya Taguchi, but it, it you know, again, defaulting back to the lead runs, because both of the chase cars, Alex spun in the chase, Kazuya finished it out, and now here, Alec Robbins was out front, and then Kazuya having that mistake right there on that last inside clip. Yeah, so, essentially, yeah, just whoever had a better lead run at that point, which, I mean, it's, it's hard to say. Kazuya, I don't think, had as many mistakes out in the lead, um, obviously, Alec had, had a few, but Alec was kind of deeper in outside zone one. So there's, there's a few back and forth spots you could point to to, to make this call. All right, here we go. Going, uh, taking a look at the replay once again. Our judges analyzing it. Vernon. So this is the, this is the lead run of Kazuya. So watch Robbins here. So again, really focusing it on Kazuya Taguchi. You can see him get to the outside zone. Alec just weevil wobble and he eventually falls down there and then into that third outside zone. Dialed on that zone. Out to the touch and go real quick and then yeah. that last inside clip. I mean, that's that's a pretty solid, you know, what we would call a qualifying run last year. That was a good independent run by himself. Yeah, the only thing I noticed with Kazuya is he was kind of off throttle between two and three. It's like he had too much momentum and, and had to come off. I mean, not that that's a massive deal. If there would yep. have been an incident, it could have been, but. There we go. Outcome. Slide of left for Kazuya Taguchi or right for Alec Robbins. And Kazuya Taguchi up garage. Jerry Yang racing. 86 gets the win. Look at that one more time. Ooh. One more time from uh, from Reese. Absolutely thrashed to get the cars back out there. James Machine Dean, three time champion in that AutoZone Mustang RTR Spec 5 FD. There he goes into that first outside zone. Transition to the second. Whoa! There we go. Banging bumpers on the wall. In outside zone three. The machine is possessed. He's literally like T2. He's been burnt down, his exposed red eye, laser vision on the prize. Right? I mean, C2, he's burnt down, you know, like, yeah. I mean, fortunately, not half his face is gone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, just, yeah, are you not entertained? I mean, come on. James Dean back at it like a track at it. Federico Shariba, he's back. Great to see uh, Fiorella and Fetty back. Yeah, James Dean, just an absolute rocket ship out of the gate. Now, Fede doing a good job here in the chase to cut some line to get back into the pocket. James Dean rubbing the back of that bumper. Bump, that bumper budget's going to be destroyed again this year. Federico, same thing, cutting some line to be able to get back in. It is so hard to keep up with those RTR Mustangs. They're absolute rocket ships. But Fede doing everything he can. I mean, that, that you know, Fiorella is nothing to be messed with. It is a quick car, but... I think they've got that uh, that Mustang just on full kill mode right yeah, now. Yeah, those I mean those 
the RTRs are hard to beat, you know, unless it's, it, it's, and that's what I was, you know, you always say in racing, it's not the $10,000 part, it's the 10 cent part. It's, yeah. a, you know, it's a bolt, it's this, you know, with, with Ben and the RTR team, hops and not making it. It was throttle cable, you know, that's just such a silly little thing there. And then, and, uh, oh wow, look at this, we got, uh, we got doors open on Fiorella. Yeah, I wonder if Fede is looking into something. Yeah, Federico Sharifo. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, well, well, in the Mustang RTR Spec 5 FD, talk about going through war. Look at, look at Betty's car. That, that pencil of Ferrari has seen a lot of things, a lot of action. And here we go, James Dean tries to chase him down in that first outside zone. Federico Sharifo, the second out and third now. Now into the inside clip. How is James going to manage? Got, got a little interesting there. Yeah. We're, I, I want to run that back because I think James was trying to go for it and Fetty kind of backed off a little bit. It, it got a little wonky. It was a little popping and locking there as opposed to just being smooth and fluid like water. So let's, what, are, what are your thoughts on that first glance? It, it looked like Fiorella had a lot of side bite dialed into the car and you can see him to start to struggle to get the car out to those zones. I mean, a lot of horsepower there. Um, you know, it's, it's a unique chassis for sure. So those adjustments aren't as easy as what you might find in, you know, an S chassis or a BMW. But, you know, Fede's car is fast. It's definitely gripped up pretty heavily. But the issue with that is he's not getting out to all the zones. James did a good job, you know, kind of put an arm's length out, you know, just, okay, you know, I'll keep you here. I'll make sure that, you know, if you do dive in really tight into one or two, we can make it. But ultimately. James Dean gets the win. So slide of left for James Dean. Federico Sharifo knocked out, but James Dean after, again, the fire, the action, everything uh, as previously that BMW. Yep, they took it out, they took the whole wiring harness, laid it in this car, and everything fit perfect. Sick, love it. Here we go. Jonathan Hurst out front, cash racing, send it. Here we go. Keep it a cool. It's a cool. Woo! There are those taillights. He keeps it off the wall, but good composure there. The Mr. Cool Kenda tires caddy. Caddy Daddy goes into that last inside clip. And there we go. Snooky. Wow. I mean, what a good debut for both those guys. Their first official head to head 2024 right here as James steps out of his vehicle. He's uh, got to feel a little sigh of relief there advancing on after all, his, all he and his team have endured. Yeah, Hurst, Hurst was struggling a little bit in practice to find basically where the rear end of the car is. He's sitting so much further back than the BMW, and, and there's not a lot of run out behind the rear wheel. You can see here he's got it sorted. Now, Stuckey, further back than I think he wanted to be. I mean, it's a very fast car. It's one of the lightest cars we've got in the series right now, but just not getting the proximity. So he could be playing a very safe game in hopes that he's able to just absolutely rocket ship out. But Hurst doing a good job through outside zone one. Outside zone two definitely could have been a little bit deeper. We see some wheel corrections there. Saw an e-brake pull coming out of two, but that did get him deep into three. Touch and go looks great. Gets back on the throttle here, almost 90 degrees to that clipping point. So Hurst had a very solid lead run, not perfect. Stuckey definitely could have been deeper in though. All right, well, let's see if they can swing that thing like that Miles Parrish track, Miles Parrish. New track got swing out right now, big car guy. I think he's here in the building. So we got Daniel Stuckey, Jonathan Hurst. Stuckey will lead. Like you said, just a, a clinical build here, built with a fine tune. Oh, let's see what the S-Pack performance s chassis got for the Pride of Paducah in that chase position. Stuckey gets out there, flirts with the wall, swings back into that second outside zone of the bridge. But look at that, Mr. Cool applying the pressure. There he is firing off like an AK. Here we go in that last inside clip. Mr. Cool and the cat here on the door of the M-Spec oh, S chassis. Man. Make some noise, Long Beach. Pop Daddy's back. Pop Daddy, Caddy Daddy. Yes, sir, Mr. Cool. He found a loophole in the rules. He's got his exhaust out the trunk. It exits past the exhaust. <laughs> more fire, more better. Right. <laughs> Oh man, what a battle. So yeah, Stuky definitely quick. You can see it, he gaps Jonathan off the launch, back on the throttle, and then Jonathan's like, well, I'm not gonna let that happen again. Starts diving in, Stuky does a really good job through both outside zones, but you can see here, Jonathan's chase is significantly more aggressive. Now Stuky, lead run wise, I would almost argue was better. He's able to fill all the zones, but just wasn't nearly as aggressive in the chase. So kind of have to weigh those two things out. Very, very smooth. Uh, Stuky on those Vitors, and you know Jonathan making the swap over to Kenda this year. But you can see those Kendas are keeping up. Uh, that that Cadillac looks great. Yep. I mean, it might be a might be a C6 underneath of all that. Right. But 
a little mean, RC car body. And yeah. it, 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 I mean, that's what everybody is, not everybody's doing, excuse me, I digress. You know, Mustangs are Ford, you know, yeah. Chris has always been loyal to the Nissan, even when he went V8, it was still a VK. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, everybody's kind of doing the Frankenstein build yeah. over the years, but that's an RC car, man. It's, oh, it's great. Yeah, it's, I, it's, I think it's cool. It's a, it's a, it's a, good, uh, it's a good look, it looks good on it. Mm -hmm. All right, so slide him left for Hurst or right for Daniel Stuckey. Left, Hurst gets one vote and two votes. Jonathan Hurst, Mr. Back to the start line, did our chase run, and oh my God, like I, this car is playing with me right now. And we're going to cross our fingers that everything gets back together in good and working order. Jared. Thank you so much. Here we go. Frederick Osbo and Dan Burkett. Freddie, multiple champion at Rockstar Energy Toyota Supra. But look at Dan Burkett, Mark 4 versus Mark 5 Supra. Burkett loses it. Rad Dan spins out, trying to be the aggressor, and unfortunately rotates, spins in that third outside zone, going into that into that touch and go. Oh, unfortunately, that was sick. Again, Mark Four versus Mark Five. So again, James Dean overheating in more ways than one. The car is overheating; it's catching fire. All these things going on. I mean, chill out, James. Chill yeah. out. <laughs> Let's look at it again here. What do you what do you think, Jacob? All right, Osbo, slight flick in that initiation gets really deep. He's he's I mean, he's at the wall on initiation. Outside zone one looks great, and then right here, Rat Dan starts to dial him in as we get into three and gets a little bit too aggressive, a bit of a touch, and that Mark Four does spin out next to the Mark Five. But Osbo, I think we're starting to see Robot Osbo come back. The, the, the way he's pulling these zones, the way he's driving right now, very calculated. If you watch the front wheels, there's not a lot of corrections. Bit of a left foot yeah. break to get it deeper, but look at you, you could you could oh yeah you could draw a straight line with that front wheel. Yeah, he's I mean that's that's what we've seen yesteryear. You know he piloted the Toyota Corolla that Ryan Turk is piloting, or you know an iteration of that. But yeah, look at that. I mean just uh, locked and loaded, and Dan just unfortunately rotates. That is going to be a huge deficit for him. Hey, congratulations to uh, Step Papadakis and uh, and his family bringing another uh, another child in the world. So congratulations to him. Steph's probably at home watching, or uh, I think he's actually controlling the car. Freddie's not so. even driving. I think Steph has the technology where it's like an RC car. He's actually I driving. I, I would not I'm be joking. shocked. <laughs> no, I don't want to. Here, here go the rumors. Yeah, Ready, here here we goes. go. I'm just, I'm just feeding, feeding the derps. <laughs> feeding the derps. All right, Dan Burkett now out front. Again, just love, love to see this. You know, Freddie got his start in the Mark IV. Dan has just always had, you know, the Mark IV Supra, so it's really cool to see this battle. Here we go. The Rad Industries Mark IV Supra. Rad Dan in that first outside zone, a bit off. Now tries to tighten up with that chrome look. And Freddie with the new white livery looking dialed. Here we go in that final inside clip. He doesn't need to do much to get this victory, unfortunately, with Dan's major mistake. So that's going to be all she wrote, unfortunately, for Rad Dan. But great to have Dan Burkett back in formative of competition. So, uh, you know, it's kind of inspiration, you know, talking to Evan Bogovich, you know, Travis Reeder, some of these drivers maybe taking a hiatus, but it's not goodbye. It's see you later. See you back here in the mix, just like Rad Dan. So let's take a look at it again over here. Justin Smash killing it on the drone pilot action here. Yeah, I, I mean, Dan, I don't know if maybe he was down on a bit of power, just <clears throat> not able to fill the zones the way that he even was in the chase. So not entirely sure what was going on with that car. Uh, watching him through practice, he was doing a phenomenal job. Could just be in his head. When you have a spin out like that, it's very difficult to have the confidence again to get into the lead and, and really push things, so. All right, here we go. Slide him left for Osbo or right for Dan Burkett. And it looks like Frederick Osbo is getting the win. Frederick Osbo gets the win. Hey, old school FD driver Kenji Yamanaka in the building. Yes, sir, hey. Kenji joining us here. Stoked to see him. Got all the celebrities rolling in. I love yeah, it. Yeah, dude, sick. Absolutely. Collection. All right, Castro out front. Let's see what he's got for Beecham. Leads him into that first outside zone. Not getting all the way out there. Beecham does, but he's bathing in that smoke. That could throw him off. Oh, it's Castro. The LTH 86 spins out. That means that's a major advantage for Beecham to spinning out in the lead run. Technically, Beecham does not need to complete the entirety of the run because if the lead car spins, obviously, you know, you're going to impede in the, in the performance of that chase vehicle. Yeah, it, it, it seemed like Castro was a bit shallow um, through one, and then I think he just tried to get, really get on the throttle, get it deeper, and that's what caused the spin. So shallow there, big flick, and then you can start to see the car already over-rotate. So throws a ton of power coming out of one. I think realizes how much speed and grip he's got at that point and then tries to save the car. You can see it's slingshot there. 
and that's it. Just not able to get the car caught up at that point. It's tough because sometimes, you know, even just letting off the throttle, you would think the car could catch. Depends on the setup, depends on the chassis. There's a lot of different variables. Um, and all these cars are so dynamic now yeah. that what you think would happen in a grassroots car or even a daily driver is not happening in these vehicles. No, they're, they're, they're like you said, the, the dynamicism is, uh, is, is really impressive and what they can do and how they can even save something. You know, you see the drivers, how they just pedal back. You're like, how did they make that happen? Just yeah. that awareness, left foot braking, just getting that car to do what they, uh, what they request. And that's, I think that was the, the blessing of James Dean, um, you know, him crashing really hard in Irwindale, let's build this car. He's built to his kind of liking, you know, versus just yeah. being handed the keys. Um, so it's, it was really unfortunate what happened and what transpired, obviously, on Tuesday. But, you know, you could see just the tenacity is there. Yeah, he's a, he's a driver that when he feels like an underdog, he drives so much better. And, right. you know, having to rebuild a car, two, two different cars, back-to-back -back events. Right. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to get in your head a bit. Here we go, Trent Beecham now out front. Red Clonex BMW. Got an LS under the hood, next in tires. Go turn, oh, and Castro shuts it down again. So Beecham does need to complete this run. But again, that, that, that's not, like you said, it's not truly an incomplete. He did have that mistake. He could salvage something here, but that's obviously a, a mistake by comparison. And Castro, I think he's got some gremlins. Yeah, yeah. definitely needs to exercise the demons out of that vehicle, unfortunately for him. Yeah, Beecham did have a, a pretty big mistake, but I do think when Castro went offline and straightened, I, I think Beecham saw that and was was kind of concerned he was going to impede. But uh, I believe we're gonna we're gonna get a, a ruling yeah. on this pretty quick. Yeah, there it is, just just like that. So Trenton Beecham gets the win. Castro knocked out, but Beecham gets the victory and advances on to the top 16. Guess what, Beecham, you're going against Osbo in the 16. All right, let's take a look. We are halfway through our Rockstar Energy Drink Top 32. And you can see uh, already in, you got Odie Bakshis versus Sorensen, Manoa versus Taguchi. Yeah, so all Jerry Yang Racing. James Dean versus a brand new caddy daddy, Jonathan Hurst. Frederick Osbo with that Rockstar Energy Drink Toyota Super going against Trenton Beecham. Halfway through our Top 32. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, the AutoZone Streets of Long Beach presented by Type S. I'm Jared Deanna, Jacob Gens. We're talking some smack and Lorette Nickel. She's a girl on the ground, getting all the heat on the street. This, this, I'm very much looking forward to this battle. Yep, here we go. Diego Higa, Matt Field. Matt Field will lead the triple seven. Beast from the Bay, got some new, uh, got some new gear, some new merch, go check it out. Nice on that. Here we go. Diego Higa, right of Brazil, chasing him down. Matt Field, four leg exhaust, Corvette, feeling the heat wave, lean customs, transition under that second outside zone, Diego Higa into that third outside zone. See, like, like I'm saying, Diego looks a lot more refined and composure. You can see being aggressive, confident with it, but Matt Field out front. Matt Field just, that's that's the beast for the Bay we know. You know, he, he won here last year. He had something to prove, and, and I feel that's, that's the theme once again. Yeah, so, you know, Matt, solid initiation there. Diego right on him, and it looks like he taps him on that initiation. And then Matt wasn't able to get out all the way to one because of that tap. Now, outside zone two looks good. Outside zone three is good. He got not quite as deep through those sections. Nice parallel transition as we come around through that inside clip. But there was some contact made right on that initiation point. Uh, he got very, very aggressive. Now, it would have pushed Matt slightly offline. Um, I mean, it is a decel zone. He is totally allowed to be deceling at that point in time. But he got just very, very aggressive and uh, causing, yeah, causing a bit of an incident there. But you know what's cool, though? It's just Matt throttling through it. Yeah. Like, yep, you hit me, let's go. Well, like, Diego that's... knew who he's going against. So Gucci, and uh, he's, he's excited. So here we go. Forrest Wang, Ken Gucci. Let's get nuts. Yellow Speed Racing, S15, always got good style. See if he can deliver here. Forrest Wang under into that second outside zone. Look at Ken Gucci. Just look at that, ready to attack. Lacking that kind of mimicking of the angle. Ken does have that proximity. This looks like kind of Daigo Saito era where he's diving in, but he needs to get to the side. Tell you what, Forrest Wang really throwing down some speed. It looks like uh, the combination of his new tire program and his car coming together, it looks like it's working out for him. 
Yeah, I spoke with him a little bit earlier about it, and, and he said the, the hardest part is learning how, how this tire performs in contrast to everything else he's used before. So um, it, it feels like he's still you know working to trust exactly what's going to happen, but initiation looks really good from Wang there. Does not quite get all the way to outside zone one. Bit of a hesitation. Throws a bit more angled through two. Back on the throttle, kind of late into three. Ken, pretty shallow in the chase there. I mean, not where he should be. If Ken can pull it a really, really strong lead run, kind of touch all the walls, he's in a really good spot. But if not, some of this uh, lack of proximity is going to be an issue. And you can see that diving that Jared was talking about before. Not what we're looking for. We want them basically front wheel behind the other front wheel. It's yep. kind of that perfect, you know, uh, perfect chasing line. Talking so. to that pocket. Yeah, the pocket. pocket. Yeah. yeah and not impeding, going in front of the front wheels. So uh, you just know, you know, you just know when it's a good chase run. So don't, uh, again, don't impede that. Yeah, if your uh, heart rate goes up, it's a good chase <laughs> run. Exactly, right? Hey, uh, Type S, if you uh, if you need some products, uh, Type S is being sold at Formula Jeff merchandise and trailers to so go on by. They got underglow kits, jump starter with a built-in USB-C cable and LCD display. Got a Pro Series slim LED trim lights. Even a Larry Chen's got a signature light 360 LED video light and power bank. So uh, if you need some power, you need some juice, you need some light, head on over to Type S, Formula Drift, buy some gear. All right, here we go. Looks like a second run of this Ken Gucci Forest Wang battle, the Gretty Bodies. Toyota 86 into that first outside zone. Wow, look at that, that was sick. That movement right there, going to that second outside zone into the third. Now here comes Forrest Wang. Again, keeping good proximity there. Ken looked a lot more comfortable out front. Didn't want to get to the side of him on that chase run, but uh, Gucci, I love that move from outside zone one to two. He just like, just magically just slid right into that second outside zone. That looked really good. Yeah, I, I really like how Ken handles the car and he looks so much more comfortable than years past. So outside zone one looked much better than what he did on Forest. Bit of a hesitation in two, but the way he able, is able to push the car out and then three is where things start to fall apart a bit for Ken. Um, Forrest in the chase, kind of a similar chase to what we saw what Ken was doing, where a little hesitant, a little bit further back than what we would have liked. But you can see here, Forrest dives in and then Ken, that I wouldn't say a reinitiation by any means, but a little more hesitation through two. But because of that, he's not able to get all the way up to three. So, you know, combining both of their runs, it's very, very close. Um, I would have liked to have seen just more proximity from both. Yep. Couldn't agree more with you, Jacob. So awaiting the outcome here. Let's see which way it is going. Is it going the way of Wang or Gucci? Here we are, slide him left for Forrest Wang or right for Ken Gushi. We got it one more time. Okay. He's judging the judges. He's <laughs> just going to say he is, that. Like, he, is the, he is the ultimate, he's like the Bowser of the judging world. Mm. He's the final boss. The judgy judge. He's the judgy judge. All right, here we go. So back to the second half of the Diego Higa, Matt Field. Remember, they had that contact. Diego Higa, a little aggressive, but uh, again, no competition timeouts were utilized. So here we go. Diego Higa out front from Brazil. JDM Supreme. 86, Matt Field, that Borla, Corvette, the beast of the bay transitioning in that second outside zone. Are they handled third? I'm telling you, Diego Higa, this is just, it seems like a different car, a different Higa behind the wheel. And Matt Field brings it on home. Wow. I'm telling you, Diego, it seems like everything is really coagulated, coming together for this Brazilian driver. A lot of hype over the years, just hasn't totally kind of manifested all that, but could have, could have shifted right now. But let's let's take a look at it again. Smash dropping in. Love that dive. And there we go. You can see as Higa initiates, gets out to outside zone one, does a phenomenal job there. Oh, I think we, <laughs> I think, speaking of incidents, I Throw think our down. drone operator is going to need a five minute timeout. But uh, yeah, I, I, I really love the way that Higa was able to fill all those outside zones. Did a phenomenal job there. Uh, I think we're going to swap back to our previous run. You can see where that incident was. So right here, yeah, yep, not, not too bad. Just a little boop, if you will. But uh, yeah, I mean, going back in memory, who had a better lead run, it's tough to say. I will say on, on Matt's chase run, uh, coming at a three into our touch and go, Matt kind of had to just drive through it. So this is this is the you know the non-crash drone version of it. So good initiation there for Giga. Lots of angle on power, nice and early. Great job through one, a little bit shallow maybe, and then through two, Matt starts to reel him in, and then you can see here Giga gets back on the power, and Matt having to be a little bit hesitant. He was almost too far in, 
and kind of misses out or the the touch and go there after three. Inside clip looked good. So that was the only big mistake there. So really, we're going to weigh the mistake from Hegon initiation versus the mistake from Matt in our touch and go. All right. So waiting for the outcome. Remember, next weekend, streets of Long Beach taken over by IndyCar Sports Car and. Drifting will be going down Friday and Saturday night. I won't be there, unfortunately. I got to go to Texas. So uh, Ryan and uh, some other some other members of our team are going to be out here. But we got a fun uh, the Mystery Super, Drift, Super Drift challenge. So here we go. Matt Field, Diego Higa, slide him left for Field one more time. One more time. They're going at it again, and that was unanimous. So you know, I, I agree with this call. Good aggressive driving. Higa got him. You know, made that contact. That was a mistake. So. Uh, you know, hey, uh, one of y'all throw on a headset there. Judges, Reese, maybe throw it on. Reese, Marin, go and throw on that headset. Let's uh, let's wrap out. We got a quick beat here. So uh, our first one more time of the season. I, I agree with it. What what it was unanimous from you guys. Yeah, I think um, we all pretty much saw the errors on, on both parts. Um, Higa coming in was a little bit aggressive on the entry, um, which gave him a ding. And then when we switch everything around, we have Matt Fields going into. Uh, the touch and go into the inner clip where there was a slight little bobble, maybe a little bit of a straightening. So I think it was just kind of conclusive that all of us were like, this would be better off as a one more time and have him go again. Perfect. And duke it out. Awesome, thank you. Yep, all right, so good clarification there from uh, Reese on behalf of Vernon, Brian Egger. Here we go, three-time champ, Chris the Force Forsberg versus Adam LZ. This is, uh, this is gonna break the internet. This should be a really fun one. You know, Forsberg and his uh, all new Z looking good, new livery in that Nismo. NOS Energy Drink, all new Z. And of course, Adam LZ getting on the box yesterday in his Drift HQ BMW. Here we go. Chris Forsberg will lead Adam LZ giving chase. Let's see what we got from these two legends coming into that first outside zone. Adam LZ drops back, he rotates, and that's gonna be a major deficit as Forsberg continues on. And it's all new Z, Forsberg. Dialed right now, he's got the VR setup, the GTR. They got the 2J under the hood of the BMW. But uh, that mistake right out of the gate, that is definitely gonna hurt LZ, Adam LZ. Yeah, it almost looked like a misshift. Like he, like he had the power, I wanna see here. So he's got the power, and then as he comes through it, the car just over rotates, but he doesn't get on when he should have. So I don't know if the car popped out of gear or something, because he does get it back in. Uh, but looking at Chris's lead run after obviously the mistake happens, First initiation looked good, but yeah, just kind of disappeared. So Chris, not super deep through outside zone one, much better through outside zone two, pushing the car nice and wide, about two feet off the wall through three. Touch and go looks pretty good and then able to get around. So there is room for uh, Adam to be able to come in here and do something better, but it would essentially mean that Chris has got a zero out at some point. Yeah, yeah, major major mistake there. Regardless, it was an independent incident from, uh, from LZ. Unfortunately, just he was he was on a tear yesterday, but right now uh, he's got a, he's got a bit of an uphill battle here. But Chris Forsberg, love to advance on and keep on keeping on. So LZ it will lead. Forsberg will give chase. What's up? Must not be anything major. I mean, Adam's pulling back up, so yeah. I don't think it. I mean, he did finish the course, kind of, but yeah, I'm I'm really curious as to what ended up happening there. I'll have to have to check in on the vlog later and find out. Right. Yeah. It is nice how open he is with, with some of these mistakes that happen. And, and we're seeing it more and more with the other drivers, too, with their content, where they're like, hey, this is yep. the real life of drifting. Yep, and, the, and their victories, man. I mean, him getting that him getting that win last year, that was, that was massive. Oh, it was great. That was huge. Yeah. That was really cool, good for him. And, you know, he's, he's doing uh, Drift Masters and he's doing FD. He's kind of bouncing around, bouncing around the world, LZ World Tour. Here we go, Drift HQ, BMW, Adam LZ. Oh, wow, he really threw it in. He hates that drum, man. I don't know what that drum did to him, but he beat that thing up yesterday and today, and Forsberg unfazed, absolutely unfazed, even going hard into that wall. I mean, Adam, I don't know what that trunk did to you, but man, he's really taking it out on that thing. We talk about people driving angry. If you want an example of what it looks like to drive really, really pissed yeah. off, this is it. And you can you can feel the frustration out of Adam through the car, and he definitely took it out on the back end of that car. It's a big initiation. I look at like 90 degrees, gets back on the throttle, sees it, flicks the rear end out to get it to the wall, smashes the bumper once, smashes the bumper twice. Unfortunately, it doesn't give him a great line through three, but then into the touch and go, looks pretty good. And then right here, eyes up the wall, says, eh, one more. 
Yep. Yeah. No need. No Bang. need the rear end. He's got time to fix it, so we're good. Yep. All right. Well, I think it's going to be a quick verdict here for Forsberg, unfortunately, uh, or unfortunately for LZ. Fortunately for Chris Forsberg, that mistake. And there it is. Chris Forsberg gets the win. Forsberg, the new livery. To it's cool to have your dreams become a reality. So yeah. it's welcome, Connor Shanahan. Moving along down uh, down the pipe here, talking about uh, that vehicle, Connor Shanahan uh, getting the keys from RCP, Rome Sharpentier, Taylor Hull. That's uh, another little Dale Earnhardt livery here, the Wrangler, Wrangler Comp Cams graphics here. You gotta love it. Garageistic BMW getting a new chassis here for RCP. And he's making it look easy right out of the gate. Well done by both the guys. Taylor Hull, amazing chase job. All right, oh, Taylor Hull gets a grab. Oh, oh, and Rome parks it around that last inside clip, and that looks independent. And we are seeing uh, Rome and his team. Looks like they are they're up here in the pits, and they are thrashing to go get down there. Hmm. Yeah, that uh, that could have been a lot worse, but it seemed like Rome just again these these damn gremlins, man. They just pop up and shut you down yeah it's hard to say I'm, I, I really want to see the replay to understand but let's take take a look at the run as a whole right. first first outside zone from Rome looks good about six inches off the wall drags the bumper through the second one you can see bits of that BMW flying in the air phenomenal job through three and then right here carrying a lot of speed no he did get tapped by Taylor oh so we didn't see that. it with the other angle but you can see it there so watch as they transition out. Rome's still on throttle, gets into the diesel. Taylor surges real hard and then locks it up. Oh, there that you go. right there, that little tap is what caused the back end of Rome to go around. Oh, and yeah, then. Yeah, him. Okay, I wasn't sure what the, the, the little piece flying off there. I hope it wasn't the belt, but it, it seems like it was the base. But Rome doing a, a phenomenal job. And I mean, Taylor's chase was really good. Just too aggressive as they transition through there. It's so tough. You got all that, you know, potential energy built up in the suspension, the car's slingshot. Yep. And, you know, you've got to try and slow the car down as, as quick as possible. So I think they're they're determining right now exactly who's at fault. My guess is it's going to be Taylor. Um, not, you know, that's not gospel 100%. yet, but yep. yeah. All right, so Taylor getting aggressive, goes into the side of RCP. Let's see who is at fault. So Taylor Hull is deemed at fault. That would mean that if Taylor wants to get hands on his car, he would have to utilize his competition timeout. Rome is allotted up to 10 minutes to get hands on his vehicle, inspect. If there is any damage, straighten things out, make sure it's all good. Don't go anywhere. Guess what? Jacob, myself, Jared Deanda, we'll be back here. AutoZone, streets along. So the one more time of Matt Field, the Beeson Bay, Diego Higa, and uh, it was unanimous one more time. And again, we're really trying to force the judges to not at, 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 to not default to one more time. All right, here we go. Matt Field, the Borla Exhaust, Heat Wave, Lean Custom, GT Radio, Corvette, boom! Right there, backs it in. That Carbon Kevlar back bumper. Look at Diego Higa, a little left foot break. Maximum angle there for Matt Field. Really max out the Higa. Look at Diego just catapulting forward. Slingshots to the side of the Corvette. Matt, I think he leveled up there. That lead run just to look, look, looked a little, little more confident. Again, just a little more aggressive, bigger angle. And you saw him just back in that Carbon Kevlar bumper. Watch that first initiation. Yeah, really good here. Lines it up perfectly. It's this section right here. Look, it gets on throttle to oh. make sure he goes out. Bit of a correction, slingshots back around through outside zone two. But Higa is really learning how to utilize the tire and the suspension correctly. Cuts the line perfectly. If you're going to do it, that's how you do it. And then through here, holds the car back. Ah, man, Higa, it's like his driving age by five yeah. years overnight. It's its so great to see. But yeah, Matt Field just using the momentum, big left foot brake to get the car back around. I mean, Matt was being very aggressive. There were some technical mistakes in there. That left foot brake was pretty heavy. Um, some of that, that last minute swing out through outside zone one was, was pretty noticeable. But at the end of the day, he did fill the zones. Yep. So, if he goes able to do the same, then those might come into play. But at the end of the day, Matt did what he needed to do to, to fill, check all the boxes. Yep. And also, um, when we look at that again, Diego in that chase position and outside zone three, you saw him kind of almost exceed the front wheels of Matt Field. So could it could have been deeper and get more back in what we describe as the pocket. Yeah. So here we are. These guys are thrashing garageistic BMW. Rome was uh, talking to Lorette and says, all right, what took us 45 minutes on Tuesday, they only got 10 to do it in right now. So here we go. Higa will be out front. Diego Higa, JDM Supreme, 86. Matt Field, Beast from the Bay. 
will be chasing him down. Really finding that secret sauce. Coming into that first outside zone. He digs deep. Let's see what Matt Field can do. He, he can't give Diego an inch. Very similar line, very comparable. Now transition this last outside zone. How's Matt Field gonna handle? And Diego Higa. Things, Man. Get, things get interesting. That didn't get any easier on the judges. No, it did not. That really did not. We are splitting hairs here. Just the, the driving prowess, and here we are. We're only in top 32. Right. Thanks for the reminder. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And, it's, it's, and also, this this you brought it up earlier, but it, again, with our new format, our seeding battle brackets, you know, we, we're going to lock in 24 into Atlanta, and that is dictated on how you end up coming out of Long Beach. So the yep. previous round dictates if you're locked in for the 24 for the, ne for the next round. Yes, yeah, so these battles are super important. Higa, good initiation. Matt having to add some angle on so he doesn't repeat what Higa did, but out front, first outer zone looks great by Diego. You can see Matt basically reacting to every move that Diego's making. He twitches a little bit, Matt twitches a little bit. And right here, dives into that, that inside pocket through the last inside clip. Um, yeah, really expert driving from Matt. Phenomenal lead, drum, uh, lead run from Diego Higa. There's not a lot of things I can point at here to, to separate the two. So I know the judges are, we've got arms crossed across the board, which yep. means they're very, you know, they're concentrating, they're ripping through these, but. Here we go, here we go. Slide left for Fielder, right for Diego Higa. Matt Field gets the win. Matt Field gets the win. It's unanimous and uh, Vernon, let's throw you on the headset there, man. Again, welcome to uh, welcome to Formula Drift. And uh, Vernon, we're going to you. It was unanimous after a one more time battle. Yeah, it was. It was, uh, it was a nice battle, fairly close, but some small corrections here and there from both drivers. But overall, I think uh, Matt did uh, the better job. And uh, what, you know, after that one more time, I mean, Diego look, looks really confident there. They had very similar lines right there in the outside zone three. But what was the big deciding factor for Matt Field over Diego? Um, I think overall he did better. He was better in the zone, in his lead. Uh, and Chase was also better in proximity, less corrections. Uh, I think it was a bit more difficult for him to chase um, Higa at that moment because he was not that deep in the zone to make some small twitches, feathering with the throttle. But overall, uh, a great job. Right on, thank you. Thanks for the insight there. Thank you. Vernon, our new judge. Again, join us from the Netherlands. Uh, judges in a variety of different sanctioned bodies, so a great addition to our judging panel. You can see the clock ticking down there. I believe that was Rome Charpentier, the 10 minute clock. So just over uh, six minutes still available there as uh, we are getting ready for our next battle. And uh, who do we have here? It looks like Rudy Hansen. Talk about Rudy Hansen and he is going against Simon Olsen. Here we go, Simon Olsen out front. Simon Olsen feels suspension. S chassis really came together last year for him. Now let's see how he transitions. Rudy Hansen, a shallow line. That outside zone. I mean, this is this has now become Simon Olsen textbook. Given the marriage of him and this car, it, it's a, it's a match made in heaven. I mean, this is just it's so great to see Simon. You know, he, he kind of struggled with that Supra, and, and then finally he says, you know what? Let, let's try this. And supercharged LS S chassis. Who knew that that was a match made in heaven? Yeah, Simon Olsen has picked up right where he left off last year. He's, he's a contender in the championship already, and you can see the confidence that he's driving with. Almost no corrections there. We get one small wheel twitch, that's it. One small wheel twitch again. He is He knows exactly where this car needs to be on track. He could have been maybe six inches deeper into, into uh, outside zone three. That's about it. Rudy Hansen, welcome to the big leagues. Welcome to battling one of the top drivers right now. It's tough. Rudy's having to cut the line. He's trying to keep up. You know, we're talking about one of the most well set up cars ever built in drifting. And Rudy's got a car that is, has seen has seen the battle. He's seen walls. Yeah. No, he's seen, no, I, 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 I joke, but yeah, he uh, he hit pretty hard uh, earlier this week. So, you know, getting that car straightened out and proper, that's that's an uphill battle. Yeah, it's tough. And, and you know, you lose some confidence in, in the chassis itself. You know, it's hit that hard. Things aren't, aren't as straight as they used to be. Things aren't pointing in the right direction. And Rudy and his team did an incredible job to get everything back together. But you can take a look at that chassis. It is hopes, dreams, and duct tape that's keeping all that together. Yeah. A lot of Pocatello, Idaho pride. All right, so you can see uh, Rome and his team. And here we go with the second half of this battle. Rudy Hansen will lead Simon Olsen. Chasing him down. That's 
seen Rudy with the clean hair. I bet he's really going to throw it out there. Just Rudy going full tilt. Whoa! Oh, there he is. I told you he's going to back it in. And he comes up a bit short of the second outside zone, but now going into the third. Now into that final inside clip. Simon looks a little caught off guard on that yeah. final inside clip, but I, I think he was maybe maybe startled a bit after that initiation going to that first outside zone. I mean, I mean these guys are thrashing. Like I said, Rome said, "Look, we, this happened on Tuesday. They don't know if they have the right arms and suspension, or they enough, I should say, because this happened Tuesday. It took mm -hmm. them 45 minutes. Now they need to do it in 10." So I'm curious kind of if they still have their five on top of that. They might still get another five out of ah. 15 minutes is not a lot. No. All right, here we go. Slide him left for Olsen, right for Rudy Hansen. I think you know the outcome. There it is, the Norwegian driver, Simon Olsen, gets the win. Past Rudy Hansen again. Rudy Hansen making the jump from prospect to pro. He is a pro rookie. The uh, highest finishing driver this event because yeah, all, so uh, all the other prospect guys got knocked out. Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as rookies, Manoa is still in the mix. Saw him uh, obviously went earlier. But uh, we are we're getting through this. Yeah. We are, we are banging away, my friend. So we still need the second half of the talking about Rome, him and Taylor Hall, and that contact. We got Dean Carnage Carney just announcing a Hyper Society. All right, so here we go. Dean Carney, Hyper Society, talking about it. Car storage, white glove service. I mean, uh, had, had the pleasure to talk about it. What a what a cool vibe there. Check out Hyper Society. Be sure to follow them on uh, IG. Brand new storage facility. It's gonna it's gonna be pretty sweet. And uh, and there he is. He is uh, going against Robert Thorne. Robert Thorne, newly prepped vehicle. Uh, seems like just refreshed. He was. I saw him uh, in practice. He was thrashing, dude. Yeah, Every road has a thorn, and thorn is in his side. If you're if you're really into like cool vehicle design, go check it. Like take a look in his pits. What they've done with uh, it's basically a double firewall system behind them to direct air into the intercooler is is like really high level thinking. Sure. I nerded out. I, I was I was in there. I had my whole head in the car. I was trying yeah. to figure out what they were doing. So yeah, it really really neat. It's cool to see him in that. Finally has a, a non stock fuel tank. He ran a, a front mount rad and a stock <laughs> fuel tank last year. Um, and like a, Dean, that's like a 2010 build. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then Dean, right now, on the biggest tires that we've got in Formula Drift, the 355 Kumos, they're a direct replacement for the ACR Viper tire. Uh, the Kumos are a really cool design. I'm really interested to see how they start to perform in competition. Uh, it's going to take a little bit for the drivers to get into it, but uh, Dean seems to have, I wouldn't say mastered yet, but he is very much on, on the path to mastering these tires. Yeah, they are some serious hooks. So take a look at those things. Uh, the tires are wider than the actual wheels. So. Yeah. Yeah, excited to see, uh, again, new look, new livery there for Dean Carney and the Hyper Society. Let's see what Robert Thorne's got, Robert Thorne's got the Smedegard Racing, ASM. Let's see, uh, here we go. So Dean Carnage Carney will lead that Dodge Viper. Initiates into that first outside zone, coming into view. Gets all the way out there. Looks like he taps the bumper. Recently, Robert Thorne. A little bit of a hiccup there in the second outside zone. Now in outside zone three. The Viper, the Fangs are out and sinks him into that final clip. Well, looks like Thorne gets right. Uh, he sticks his Thorne in that inside clip. Great lead run there from Dean Carnage Carney and the Hyper Society Dodge Viper. Liam Dorham, what'd you think of that run there, buddy? Oh, man, the clock is ticking. So, yeah, to your point, watch that clock. He might get an additional five on top yeah. of that 10. Yeah. He will. So we are getting confirmation there. He will get an additional five when that 10 expires. Make some noise for him. Dean Carney and Robert Thorne, the ASM Radium. Little big duck club out back. So you can see just how quick those Kumos are on that Viper. And Robert Thorne gets caught a little bit off guard. And you can see him scrubbing a bunch of angle to get there. Now, Dean did miss a good chunk of outside zone two with that because of how quick that car is, but makes up for an outside zone three, does a great job through our touch and go on our inner clip. But you can see here Robert Thorne scrubbing a ton of angle to get back in. And then Dean just rocket ships through this transition. Actually a little bit late on it. It's incredible he was able to scrub the speed to get the car back around. So. Dean really coming into his own. I mean, we, we've always had conversations about him and the Viper. I think this is the pairing. You know, the tires, the build, you know, the, the sponsorship, everything, it's all coming together. 
All right, so, uh, yeah, t sorry, just to get some updates here. So five minutes has started. So because the contact was caused by Taylor Hole, they, they said, okay, you get 10 minutes to uh, work on the vehicle. 10 minutes has now expired. Now he is utilizing his competition timeout, which is five minutes for RCP Rome Charpentier. So hopefully uh, that five minutes will help. Yeah, 15 minutes to do a 45-minute job. Yep. Where's the easy button? Mm. Here we go. Robert Thorne will lead, again, that ASM BMW. Made a lot of noise in pro spec and jumped up to pro and just the learning curve. And what I love about Smet uh, excuse me, not Smetagard, but Robert Thorne is traditional racer gone drifting. So he's a good, good testimonial to like, look, yeah, you can race and drift. You can do it all. So really cool. Here we go. Dean Carter's trying to chase him down. Let's see what that Hyper Society Vipers got for the BMW of Thorne. There goes Thorne in the first outside zone. Dean Carney straight up has a very shallow line, but Robert Thorne maxes out that angle. It looks like Dean Carney there in that chase position. He's on the center line. Unfortunately, you saw him initiate on a, on that first outside zone. He was in close proximity, but when he went to the second, you see him take that shallow line and comes off of outside zone too. Yeah, so, you know, going back to years past, you'd be looking for a zero, but that is not going to be the case here. What we're looking for is, was Robert Thorne's lead run chaseable? He got on the power very late in initiation and then holds it almost too long. Now, Dean does go straight, has to reinitiate. Was it longer than two seconds? We start to get into some of these fun rules. Dean, again, having to reinitiate. But Robert's lead run was by no means perfect and had some really strange moments. So watch him come through here into three. Ton, a ton, a ton of angle. I cannot express that enough. But he was deselling in a zone that was not a decel zone. So. The argument could be made that that was a non-chaseable run by the standards given by the judges through the track map, and that is why Dean had to pull that out of the car. You can see there, Dean did shallow up. He did reinitiate. The way it is written in the rule book right now, which anybody can download from the FD website if you want a clarification, is approximately two seconds. Now, approximately is the main word there. Yep. It's not exactly two. It does allow for a bit of interpretation because uh, the idea is to not make this so stringent and oh this is a zero that's a zero but looks like the judges have their decision all right here we go so slide left for carney right for thorn we got a split decision and thorn thorn gets the win two to one thorn and the asm bmw gets the win dean carney and the hyper society viper knocked out so split decision there and uh yeah i, I have to attribute those that mistake you know like you said angle decel all those things but overall i think just the straightening and, and not adapting mm -hmm. to what Thorne was presenting to him. Here we go, Ryan Turk and Connor Shanahan. A lot of buzz behind Shanahan coming over here. His brother just over my shoulder, he's in his ear telling him what to do. But Ryan Turk, he's got a new power plant. He's got six cylinders, not just four anymore. So Ryan Turk, he wants to get uh, on the box. And like Lorette said earlier, he won here a couple years ago in that Rain X Toyota GR Corolla. He's on Nitto tires. Again, shout out to Steph Papadakis and his family bringing a new baby into the fold. Another Papadakis family member. So uh, hopefully everybody is uh, safe and sound. Shout out to Steph Papadakis and his family. Here we go. Ryan Turk out front at Reynex Toyota. GR Corolla initiates Connor Shanahan. The garage is the BMW. Transition now to that second outside zone. Ryan Turk possessed. Look at Shanahan. Oh. Ryan Turk taps the wall. Turk tapped the wall, or was that? Let, let's let's run that back. Yeah. But Shanahan, Shanahan was. He knows who he's going against. I mean, this is like, <laughs> this is literally like a kid's fantasy. He's like, I want to drift in the streets of Long Beach. I want to go against Ryan Turk. I want to have this weapon. Shanahan's fantasies are playing out. Yeah. This is this has got to be a fever dream to uh, to Connor Shanahan. So we might need a couple more timeout clocks. Oh, look Whoa. at that. Wow. Oh, look at that. The Garage oh, BMW put together high fives oh. all around. Lorette was giving, yeah, you get chills there oh. right now. Oh, there's there's Rome's dad cheering him on, the handlebar mustache man right there. Let's take a look at this again. All right, Ryan Turk lighting up those nittos right after initiation. Connor Shanahan giving him no room to breathe. Turk pushing that bumper into the wall through one, and then you see a ton of angle here as Turk starts to fire through, gets yeah. off, and that rebound touched the front end of Connor Shanahan. So. Now we get into some fun, fun interpretation there. Turk did hit the wall. That would be considered a mistake. The repercussion of that mistake made contact with the chase vehicle. Now, we asked the chase vehicles to be as close to these lead cars as possible. Absolutely. 
realistically, if Shanahan was actually a bit further back, it might be a different story. So it, it it's going to be interesting how we have to deal with this. I look at this as a big mistake from Turk. The repercussion of that was that Shanahan was had contact made. Turk does continue on through some of the run. Shanahan's not able to. And we are getting clarification here. I am informed that Ryan Turk is at fault. Okay. So Shanahan can get hands on the vehicle. Unfortunately, Turk, you know, with that hit and it being deemed his fault, that is going to be a deficit for him. So disrupts that chase car, not only just with the contact, but also the, the fluidity and the finishing of that run. So Ryan Turk, like I said, new power plants, uh, you know, same same Ryan Turk, but to obviously just like he says, gets wants to get better and better. Lorette Nickel with the updates here via text. She says, Rome, there was a bolt stuck on the Wise Fab kit, couldn't get it off, finally got it off, got it back together, threw it on, 38 seconds left, and now he pulls oh. it back out there. So Rome sharpens here and his garageistic team back together and they will run. There's Ryan Turk. Looks like he just had him back to Lund. And uh, yeah, no oh. rest for the weary. All right, garageistic. Back at it, go for it. Yeah, here you go, guys. All right, you just fixed Rome's car. Now let's let's take a look at Shanahan's car. And he was talking about, you know, his car, his setup, and uh, and what he's got. Look at Shanahan. He's ready to grab a ready to grab an impact. <laughs> he's he's ready to go. I mean, I, I, I've seen this family operate, and everybody puts hands on the car. Right. It's it, there is no just sit back and relax. It is we're all here to wrench. I mean. Jack's, Jack's already downstairs. Yeah, I don't know when he made it there. That's <laughs> not a man. far. That's a that's far walk, a, man. That, that, that's a big man right there. He oh, we got a D bead. Okay. So now, so Turk is at fault. This should allow Shanahan to be able to swap out those tires uh, because of that. Yeah. Now we're looking at that on the driver's side when the contact was made. That's interesting. I don't really understand how that would have all come around if a D bead on that side of the car. But all right, so. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of things unfolding here, and, and Turk was ready to go, but I don't I don't know if he was not informed that uh, <laughs> Shanahan is not able to run. So yeah, that that D beat right there. So they should be able to use their timeout to be able to swap this out. Now, I think yeah, Turk could get the same option, yeah. but uh, yeah, hey, with some action there, Lorette, what what's it like down there in the pits? Uh, it's chaotic and insane. And Connor, what damage are you most worried about? Um, yeah, so as I hit him, I first hit him at the rear, and uh, yeah, they beat at the tire. Um, and then I was, I was trying to back out of it, because I knew he was gone super deep in, but it was my first time ever following a Corolla, so I didn't know like, actually how deep he was. But, you know, I, I knew something like that was going to happen, to be honest. My brother was watching him in practice a lot and said that he's on rails, that he's, he's going to be going for it. So we knew that we had a chance that he was going to make a mistake. So, um, yeah, I just got to try get the team to fix the car. And... Um, I've got good guys around me, and uh, that's the most important thing. Go back out, put down a solid lead, and, and hopefully take the win. Connor, thank you. Jared? Great attitude. You can see, you know, uh, a, a controlled chaos. You know, no pun intended there, but you can see, you know, like you said, just his attitude and, and talking, bigging up his brother, and just talking about that inside. That's, that's yeah. all comes together for him. Yeah, great spotting there. I mean, Jack Shanahan, another absolutely phenomenal driver. Yep. In the in the Outer Zone podcast, they did talk about them potentially trying to get a full team over here, have both of them come over and drive, and I think that would be nuts. Jack is, Connor is very calculated. Jack is just, Luke I'm going to smash everything. <laughs> oh, it's, it's phenomenal to watch. All right, here we go with the second half of this battle. Taylor Hull and uh, RCP, Rome Sharpens here, which you can see sans the bumper, get the thing back together, 38 seconds left, and... Their team is, uh, you know, put their back down. They're working on Connor's vehicle already. So here we go. The second half of this battle, we'll, I'm sure we'll revisit the first battle. All right, here we go. Let's take a look. All right, we are clear to send. And now it's Taylor Hull out front with RCP in the chase position. Lights extinguish, and the comp cams met. That's a, another, the Intimidator livery design. Comp cams get a tires, and look at this, Taylor Hole pulling away from Rome Sharpens here. Taylor Hole transitions under the bridge, and RCP, you know, that that's the problem, is when you change out the suspension parts, how much can you really trust for all those parts that they're set up? You don't want to ride off a car for the sake of, you know. Yeah, that, that would just yeah. be an unfortunate turn of events. 
It does look like Rome was driving with a non-optimal alignment. Um, yeah. I, I think it's the best way to put it. I mean, yeah. you get everything back on the car. These teams are smart, too. They'll preset a lot of stuff to make sure that when it bolts on, the alignment should be good. But there's a lot of things. I mean, you, you, you get one shim in the wrong place. That's it. Your caster's way out. Car's not self-steering anymore. You're going to run into a bunch of issues. Yeah. So it did look like he was fighting through all of that. But, yeah. I mean, Rome's... If there's anybody to drive through a problem and just make it work, it's going to be Rome. So that's what it felt like in this case. Um, just the, the car was not perfect. He was fighting it a lot. Um, Taylor out front did a pretty good job, but he is, you know, a little bit behind on it. So it's going to go to our judge's decision. Here we go. Slide him left for Rome Sharpens here, right for Hole. And RCP gets the victory and advances on. So after all that, you're going to thrash. And it looks like uh, they're... they're they got it. They're dialed. They're put back together. So uh, congratulations. Jet Neff, thanks for coming out. Sean, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. So now, now we get into this other thought-provoking thing. Where did Connor D beat? Yeah. Was it because of contact? Where was that at? And yeah. Because it was on the Elaborate driver's there, side. Jacob. Yeah, it was on the driver's side, which is interesting. He didn't make contact there. So what we're looking for is, did the car do something strange before then? Could it have been one of these e-brake pulls where you see the side skirt off? So it's really, really hard to tell, but it is possible that the tire actually de-beaded coming off of two, and then that is why Connor started to slide into Turk. And then the question becomes, did Connor hit Turk before Turk hit the wall to then hit Connor? Yeah. So. Big domino effect here. I mean, these, <laughs> these cars do run some pretty low tire pressure, but look at, you can start to see Connor over rotate a little bit, and it seems like he may not have actually been able to get the car managed and wrangled back around to be able to come back through. So it's a wild series of events. Everything happens super, super fast. I mean, it'd be great to have, you know, a hundred cameras everywhere, everything in 120 frames so we can get perfect on everything, but. It's just interesting to see a D-bead on the driver's side because there wasn't contact made there. Yep. All right. The plot thickens. The plot thickens. We're stirring the pot here. Yeah. Taking a look, like you said. There, you see the side skirt pop yeah, off. Yeah, he's dragging. Yeah. So, we just need 8K drones. I think that's it. That'll fix this problem. <laughs> yeah, it's just, that, just that simple. Cinema cameras just, on drones. Justin Smash, get on that. He is our... Yeah. <laughs> All right, Shanahan just uh, playing it cool right now, seeing uh, how this will transpire. So we're getting a lot of discussion going on right now between judges and staff, and I mean, even Ryan Sage is in on the discussion, yep. running through the rule book, making sure that we know exactly what the correct call needs to be. All right, so uh, after this, just, uh, just for clarification, Turk, Shanahan, we still have um, Nick Novak who will complete a run, but because he was scheduled to go against Von Gint Jr., who is not here in competition for this round, we're going to see him in Atlanta and Irwindale. That's what he's uh, he's told me and been pretty open about that, doing two rounds. Um, so this is essentially our, our last battle and yep. what, what a, one it is. So um, we're going to have a heck of a halftime. I mean, we're filling up here. I'm pretty sure we're going to be sold out. Um, people still streaming in and people know, you know, hey, some people just wait to the 16, some this, that, but we have a halftime break. I'm going to be over the Type S booth giving out some stuff, so join myself, um, Larry Chen at 1 o'clock. And, uh, you know, we're the light on this second one. And now Shanahan will lead. Wait till they extinguish. Don't hit a cone. Hey. It looks like we got a clean start. Here we go. Shanahan out front. Garageistic. BMW got the Red Bull on the side. The Rain X Toyota GR Corolla. Ryan Turk. Shannon goes hard into the paint in that first wall. Into the second outside zone. Ryan Turk has a major production. Look at that back bumper. Thrashing and bashing into the third outside zone. Now into that final inside clip. Ryan Turk goes. He needs to apply the pressure. Brings it on home. Almost has contact. Makes a noise for Ryan Turk. And Connor Shanahan putting it down. America versus Ireland. BMW versus Toyota. And a FD rookie against Ryan Turk. What do you got? All right. Shanahan, big fan initiation getting into it. Let's see how deep they go into first outside zone. Just grazing it, both of them. Phenomenal, phenomenal transition there. And then Turk gets into the wall a little bit in outside zone two. Keeps the run going. Great chase job from Ryan Turk. And that is because Shanahan out front looks phenomenal. I, I, I love the way that Shanahan drives and, and Turk adapted to it. I mean. His, his spotter, Turk's spotter, told him exactly what was going on. There was a big correction 
there from Ryan Turk coming off of outside zone two. Looks like he caught the wall just a little bit too hard, and that's what caused the car to straighten out a little bit. And then almost, touch, uh, almost touches his front wheel to the rear wheel. So I think we're going to flip back to the first run replay so we can take a look at that again. Because um, what I want to see here, and I was discussing earlier, is even though Turk did hit the wall, he did finish his run. So if he didn't straighten for more than two seconds, or approximately two seconds, and didn't have like a 180, so we go. It. So Ryan Sage and I have been arguing back and forth, I've been arguing with my boss already about you're fired <laughs> about how this all works, and and it's it is it's a it's an interesting discussion because yeah. it's the first time we're seeing this part of the rule book being utilized, which yeah. is that what is now an incomplete is very difficult to incomplete. Ryan, in my opinion, did finish off that run, but did it? Did that contact cause Connor to not be able to finish off that run? Oh, man. And our judges are about as stressed as you would expect. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. You just, this, is, this is what we anticipate. This is, this is why they're paid the, the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, we are, again, really uh, elaborating on what, what's going down here. Do we have a victor? Connor Shanahan, welcome to Formula Drift. It's an interesting turn of events here, but we will have a halftime break if we have a verdict here. And we're back here for two. All right, slide him left for Turk, right for Connor Shanahan. There's one and a two. Connor Shanahan gets the win on his maiden voyage in Formula Drift Pro Championship. Ryan Turk knocked out early in that Rain-X Toyota GR Corolla Nitto tires. There's RCP, Rome Charpentier. He's psyched because uh, Rome is in the mix. He's going to go against Forsberg. So, uh, Jacob. Wow. Top 32. It's already, it's already going down. I'm yelling timber. No, I'm yelling send it. That's right. So there you go. Shanahan's got to be stoked. His brother's going to have some words with him. He's going to slap him around a little bit and uh, say, don't get those strikes anymore. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's, yeah. Hey, uh, real quick, Reese, throw your headset on for me. Let's, uh, let's talk about that real quick. We got, we got a moment here. So, uh, yeah, let's get some, get some clarity here for everybody at home. I mean, Sometimes I wish we could just record all the crazy right. discussions up here. Yeah, yes and no. Yes and no. Reese, well, you came to that conclusion. How so? You're good. So we ended up coming to the conclusion. Um, it, it was a hard battle to go back and forth and see all the details. Um, but at the end, you know, we went with uh, comparing the leads. Uh, we saw that there was a hit that went on to uh, when Tarek was in the lead. Hit, straightened up. And then when we looked at Connor's lead as well, too. A lot better. Yep. We know that there's a lot of other things that went on in the mix, but ultimately, you know, we go with our standard, and it was a hard uh, battle to go through. But and if Shanahan wasn't there, Turk hit the wall. So like, just, just don't do that. That yeah, yeah, yeah. that in in my eyes, like, look, you messed up. Yeah. And, and regardless of hitting Shanahan, and regardless of the D beat, he was in that chase position. If Shanahan wasn't there, say he was even further back, and you brought up that point earlier, Jacob. If he was further back, it wouldn't have been an issue, right? right? And maybe maybe D beat, maybe not TBD. We'll yeah. never know. We'll never know. But Turk hit the wall. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. End of story. Yeah, that's what it went. All right, cool. Thank you, Reese. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Vernon. Thank you, Jacob. Let's throw it down to Lorette Nickel. Lorette, what's cooking? Connor, as soon as you drove in, I just saw you shaking your head. Was that out of disbelief? Uh, no, belief more than anything. <laughs> um, that was messy. I wish it could have been cleaner. Like, we could have definitely been one of the battles of the day, I think. Uh, the first run, it is what it is. I'm not sure exactly what happened, even on my side, to be honest. Um, just unfortunately that he went in and, um, you know, I we were trying to analyze as much as we could in practice and I kind of had an idea that he was going to overdo it. My lead run, I didn't know what, what anyone was thinking, so I just said, okay, this has to be, at least if I get knocked out, a statement lead run. And uh, I think it was quite good, you know, outer zone one, outer two, outer three, right to the end. And uh, the feeling is good, but the want is there for sure. And I just got to get my head back in the game. I was a little bit distracted there. And, um, yeah, the fight is on for sure. Okay, what were you distracted by? I just, there was a lot of confusion when we came in about who got the competition timeout and we didn't know who was at blame or, or what they were thinking. So, um, you know, that was playing in the back of my mind and, um, you know, I just tried to do everything as I could just to stay calm and make sure that I was in my first FD main show. Right, and in our first interview, I heard you say that you hit Ryan. Was that because of a mistake you made or did you capitalize on a mistake he made? Uh, no, when I hit Ryan, he was fully in the wall. Like, I could see him going in deep and outer tree, so I had to start backing back. Um, so I knew he was going to go in, you know, uh, for sure. So, yeah, when I made contact, for sure, uh, well, on my side, there was nothing I could do. I had to hit him. There was no way out of it. So, 
it is what it is. I wish it could have been cleaner, but the year is young. I'm sure we'll battle again, and I look forward to it. But now we just look what's ahead of us and take it one step at a time. Okay, Connor, thank you very much. And Jared and Jacob, can you guys feel the energy down here? It Absolutely. Is incredible. No, coming off of you, you're, you're just like I'm glowing. Too. I'm so excited. I know I'm you so are. I'm so happy. I know. Well, it's great to see you again, Lorette. Missed you. Um, we saw each other during the off season, but thank you so much for contributing and doing what you do, homegirl. Thank you so much. Jared. All right. Well, there it is, 2.30 local time. Jake McGinn's, myself, Lorette, and top 16. We're going to find out who's going to win here on the streets of Long Beach. Again, you got a little bit of time, so grab a meal, grab a drink, grab a good time. Let's send it, 2.30 local time. I'm going to head down to the pits. Let's keep the party going.